The Habs could be making another trade soon as the Columbus Blue Jackets say they want to move on from one of their defensemen, and defenseman Adam Boakvist could maybe be a great fit for the team. We'll be talking about why they should or maybe shouldn't make this trade, plus a surprising addition to the starting lineup for tomorrow night's season opener versus the Leafs, and finally some talk from Coach Marty on Cole Caulfield's goal pace all on this episode of Habs Digest. Let's dive right into Cole Caulfield, Jesse, and Marty St. Louis. I mean, look, he's a quote machine. This guy always says the right things. And guess what? He did it again. And he said Cole Caulfield could very well score 50. In an interview, someone asked him, is it possible he could score 50? He said, is it possible? Yeah, but it's not something we're focusing on. If Cole ends up scoring 50, I'm not going to be as impressed at the 50 goals he scored, but how he's playing the game and how he is impacting the game on both sides of the puck. And now I got to say, like, look, I mean, if at the end of the season he has 50 goals, I'm not going to be like, yeah, but did you see his positioning though? But Jesse, this 50 goal pace, I know you brought this up before the show, this list of players that Cole Caulfield, like Cole Caulfield has more goals in his last 82 games than guys like Austin Matthews, Jason Robertson, Verhage, Kachuk, all these guys, Caulfield has more goals than. So let's talk a bit about it, Jesse. Are we coming out right away and saying Cole Caulfield is going to get 50 this year? He definitely can, but that's not the most important thing. As we know, Martin, you know, St. Louis, he's all about winning hockey, winning games, you know, and I believe there is a world where he can, can score 50 goals and, you know, play some winning hockey. You know, you have to think scoring those 50 goals would definitely help in winning some hockey games. But you get what Martin St. Louis is saying, right? And that's something from Cole Caulfield. Like, he wants to improve on his defensive game. He already knows he's dynamite, you know, offensively. So he knows that. I think we're going to see that improve with him. I think playing with somebody who's so defensively responsible like Nick Suzuki helps so much with that. But absolutely, Cole Caulfield can score 50 goals. Like, for how good of a player he is, you know, over the last 82 games, scoring more than Austin Matthews, Mark Scheifele, Timo Meyer, Tim Sousa, for how good he is, he doesn't get enough hype. So that's that's why we're here, Josh. We're here We're here to hype him up, to give him, you know, the praise that he deserves because he can absolutely do this. Yeah, the Cole Caulfield fan club. I mean, look, we love him. I mean, the, the pace has been insane for his goal scoring, even in the preseason. It just looks like, like Coach Marty said, he's like, I don't need to teach him how to shoot. Like, this kid knows exactly what to do how to be in the right places and he's just getting better every single season now i think though jesse if he is to score 50 we kind of were going to talk about this but i'll just also ask this question really quick anyway you got to think it's good. a lot of them have to come from the power play and that's been a point of contention for the habs recently with coach marty also saying that his special teams coaches might deserve extensions um i i feel like the Habs power play has to click at least a little bit for 50 to be possible what do you think that's a very good call, absolutely. And, you know, maybe Cole Caulfield is the player that kind of gives new life to this this power play, right? Mm-hmm. So that that's huge, right? And I think, you know, for for the coaches, Alex Burrows, you know, being involved, it's, uh, this is going to be an important year for him. He's going to need to really get this right. But obviously, Cole Caulfield can definitely help him out quite a bit with that. But, you know, I, I expect to see some tweaking, you know, but he can absolutely light it up. But, you know, the power play will be a big part of that. Yeah, for sure. We'll have to just monitor that as the season goes on. Hopefully, Cole Caulfield can breathe some extra life into the Habs power play. Let's move on to the second topic of today. And uh, there's a bit of a surprise for the opening game against the Toronto Maple Leafs, Jesse. And that is in net. No, it's not Samuel Montembeau and no, it's not Caden Primo, but it's Jake Allen that's going to be making the start against the Leafs in the season opener tomorrow on October 11th. Now, look, I understand Jake Allen's been around the team for a while, right? But a lot of Habs fans, including us this year, thought it's like, hey, Samuel Montembeau, he proved himself last year. He played in that World Cup. He he is the 1A heading into this season. But after a bit of a rough camp, Coach Marty came out and said today, he's like, I just think Jake Allen, stats show that he he gives us the best chance to win the game which is a bit interesting, but uh, yeah, I mean, Allen was decent against the Leafs in the two games he played against them last year, and Jesse, I feel like some fans are maybe thinking that this is a slight against Montembeau. To me, my opinion is sort of just like Allen had a better camp. You kind of just ride the hot goaltender, and that's kind of what you do in the regular season anyway. Maybe it's just that, but uh, you can't help but, but wish we saw Monty on game one. It's very true, but bold takes, you know, from Martin St. Louis all the way around. You know, Cole Caulfield's going to score 50, Jake Allen gives us the better chance of winning on opening night. Like, definitely not the neutral answer there. No. Hey, just really kind of putting his cards out on the table. Of course, Monty didn't have the best camp, but I think all this kind of shows is that, you know, obviously that starting goalie drama is continuing, but it's because we haven't found our 1A yet. It's it's really not there yet. Um, you know, obviously, I think Samuel Montembeau is going to get plenty of time this season to kind of show his worth. You have to feel like, you know, goalies, it's a competitive position. He's going to take that to heart. He's just going to use it to kind of, um, 
to kind of work even harder to kind of regain that spot. But it's so interesting to see this this sort of drama continue. Yeah, it's a, it's a bit wild, right? And look, you know, there's going to be a lot of testing this year. We're going to see Primo in a nice number of games. There's a reason they didn't send him on, on waivers. Thought he might get claimed. Maybe they just didn't want Tampa to claim him. Who knows? But at the same time, like he's going to get some games. Jake Allen's going to get some games. Monty's going to get some games. Odds are one of Allen or Monty might be traded. Like there's, there's going to be a lot of moving parts this year. And yes, Allen gets game one. Maybe Monty gets game one at home on Saturday. Day. a lot to be seen but uh, yeah an interesting decision nonetheless but uh let's get into the the interesting topic and i and i think uh some habs fans might like this some habs fans might not like this and we're talking about more potential trades now the columbus blue jackets came out today and according to frank saravalli so they've been engaged in trade dialogue with teams in recent days in an effort to move a defenseman from their nhl roster they want more flexibility at the position. And then Marco D'Amico kind of comes in and says, and also Sarah Valley mentions that they can maybe move Peak, they can maybe move Boakvist or Bean. And Marco D'Amico, a Habs insider, says that he likes Boakvist. He's a right-hand shot offensive defenseman. He can run a power play. Habs have too many forwards, and a lot of their defensemen are waiver exempt, meaning that they could be logical partners, right? If Columbus wants a defensive flexibility, getting a young waiver exempt player, like someone like a Justin Barron or maybe a Jordan Harris, can help them kind of move around their pieces a bit, or if they get a, a forward that maybe is, is waiver exempt from Montreal, that could help them out as well. I don't know, Jesse, I, I kind of like the idea of Adam Boakvist, a guy who has shown a lot of offensive potential, 11 goals in 52 games one year, 24 points last year, but has been perennially injured, 23 years old, 2.6 million per year. What are your thoughts? Do you think Montreal could use an Adam Boakvist, or would you maybe stay away with the thing, uh, with the way that has defensive prospects look now? It's an interesting player, but I would have to say, you know, with what we have coming up, like if he was a little bit more of a vet, I would say that's something we need more. Like you have to feel like, you know, David Savard is going to be gone really soon. Um, you know, so if maybe bringing in a vet would make sense to me on right-handed defense to kind of replace Savard because – you have to feel like we have Reinbacher coming in as of next year. You have to feel like he's going to make the team. Mm -hmm. Logan Mayu, you know, I feel like there's a very strong possibility that both of them make the team on right-handed defense for, for next year, right? So, you know, depending on where you want to slot them, but you have to feel like Reinbacher or Mayu, they're definitely going to, one of them is going to take a top four spot with the Habs, mm -hmm. right? So when you got a guy like Volk with, obviously, you know, paying him that much, you don't want to have him as a third pairing. It's either first or second, you know, kind of pairing right D, um, in my opinion. And so I feel like we have those those young guys, you know, I feel like Reinbacher may very well could fill a first pairing defenseman by you if he's not on the second on the third. So I don't know if he's necessarily the right fit long term, in my opinion, just because I feel like we got such great guys coming up and we definitely want to give them all the ice time they need once they're here. Yeah, I think that that's actually a fair point because they're running the power play perspective. I mean, you still have Matheson to do that for a bit. You have Jack Eye right now. It could be Reinbacher in the future, it could be my in the future. And the Habs really don't like to run two defensemen on the power play, so I, want, I wonder if Boakvist's reps would be limited. But I kind of see it as, like, I, I don't see it as necessarily a bad move, and I'll, I'll sort of explain why, though. <laughs> you're, you're very much convincing me, as you often do in, in these kind of things. My thought is, Adam Boakvist, although he's been injury-prone, and I understand, like, look, oh, he's, he'd be really good if he's not injured. Let's be honest, that's a lot of the Habs roster over the last couple of years. But Adam Boakvist, to me, is similar to what Justin, what we kind of want Justin Barron to be in some ways, right? He's already a proven offensive talent at the NHL level, 23 years old. He has this year and next year on his contract at $2.6 million per. Giving him a shot as a 23-year-old, he fits a bit of the timeline. And if you can give up someone like a Justin Barron, who is waiver-exempt, again, it gives Columbus that leeway they need. Maybe you give him a little bit more draft compensation or something like that. But I think you're right, Jesse, too. I mean, if you look... If you look into the future, right, and you bring in someone like an Adam Boakvist, your team right now is already stacked full of defensemen. And let's say we get rid of Barron. That's one of the NHL defensemen. You bring back Boakvist. And then next year, you have guys like Mayu, Reinbacher, and then Hudson probably all competing for another defensive spot. At that point, yeah. do you relegate Boakvist to the third pairing? Is then Mayu or Hudson or someone weird going to be on the third pairing? Maybe that is another point of concern. It's true, you know, but you always want to look at these situations carefully because young, talented, right defensemen don't come around all the time. You know, that's why we drafted them with our with our first pick in the first round, you know, uh, this year, right? So you definitely, you want to look at these possibilities. He's an interesting player, and he, his name comes up a lot in the NHL, right, for, for a lot of reasons, right? He's, he's shown some some good signs, obviously not playing with the strongest defensive teams uh, of late with, uh, with CBJ. Um, you know, but that being said, it's like, you know, 
defense is where we're really so strong at. And, you know, while we can't just right, a, right away assume that all of our prospects are going to be home runs, I feel like that's a strong point on our team. So I, I'm really happy with what we have right now, and I'd be more looking to kind of uh, bolster more of our offensive lines at this point in time. Yeah, and I think that's fair too. It, it's very interesting because, like you said, a player like him doesn't just grow on trees, hard to come by. And if you can get him for a reasonable price, if you know he's a guy who's often injured, Columbus is looking to maybe move on from him for flexibility, former eighth overall pick, maybe you go for it. But let us know in the comments what you guys think. Do you think Adam Bokva should be a target or not? Let us know down below. We'd love to hear from you because he's a very, very interesting player. But that'll do it for this news episode of Habs Digest. If you enjoyed, leave a like, comment, subscribe to the channel. We're almost at 10,000 subs, 8,100. We really appreciate all the support. I'm Josh Goss for my co-host, Jesse Poirier. We'll catch you in the next one.